Okay, so thank you everyone for coming uh, in person or Zoom. Um, so today we'll be talking about tools to predict cell-cell communication from single cell RNA sequencing data. Um, I'm gonna be focusing a lot on cell phone and cell chat because they're both like pretty widely used, highly cited, and they've just been what's been recommended to me um, by collaborators. Um, but there's a lot of other tools. <laughs> um, so we'll go over uh, the databases that each uses, the input and output of each package, the methods of each, and then we'll compare and contrast them and talk about things to consider before choosing one of these or potentially another package uh, that you want to use if you want to predict cell-cell communication. And we'll talk a little bit at the end about how to use them, um, but not much. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, there's a lot of tools to, out there, like cell chat and cell phone are what we're going to be talking about today, but there are a lot more, and I'm sure there's like tons more that I don't even know about, and we'll talk a little bit about other tools, these tools specifically at the end, um, and what you might want to use them for after we have like a basis of comparison. Okay. So starting with um, the databases, not even the methods, just the databases that each package uses. Um, there's a, so they each curated their own. Uh, so starting with cell phone DB database, uh, that was curated for humans only. Uh, and a lot of previous packages um, did not include heteromers. So here for the example they're showing is that this receptor has two proteins that need to join in order for the receptor to work. But a lot of previous um, packages and databases just had like a ligand receptor interaction and didn't really consider anything that had subunits. So it was quite limited. Um, so this was like an improvement. Uh, and you can also in version three of cell phone DB add custom interactions if you feel like it's missing some. Um, so there's 1,396 interactions in their database. Um, okay, and then going to cell chat for comparison, for comparison, they curated it for humans and mice. So there's two different data sets. Um, the cell phone DB creators say, if you want to use it for mice, just like convert to homologs using like Biomart or something, which like maybe that's fine, but the cell chat creators decided to curate a human and a mouse data set. So you don't have to like convert to the human homologs. Um, so they include the heteromers again, but they also include agonists, antagonists, co-inhibitory receptors, and co-stimulatory receptors. So there's, as you might expect, because they're including more types of proteins, uh, more validated interactions. To, so 2021 instead of 1,396. Yep. Okay. Moving on. And oh, I'm talking a little fast. So if I have, if you have questions, just like interrupt, please or send something to the chat. Okay, so we're gonna talk about cell phone first because it's um, it's going to be faster. It's The methods are a bit simpler. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So this will just be the first part of the talk and then we'll talk about cell chat, which has a lot more capabilities um, and outputs. So the cell phone overview, you input your pre-processed single cell RNA sequencing data. Um, they recommend that you put in normalized count data, but you could put in like whatever you want, like raw data, which I feel like they should have like mandated you need to do normalized count data, but it'll work on anything, um, which is, you know, good or bad, depending on what, <laughs> what you want to do. And then uh, you also have to include metadata. So you have to have all your cells annotated with the cell type already. Um, so then it'll detect uh, ligands and receptors that are present in over 10% of cells for each cluster. Uh, and that 10% is the default, but you can adjust it. Uh, and then it outputs, uh, so, so it does some statistical analysis, which we'll talk about on the next slide. And then it outputs you know, some text files and a heat map and a dot plot, which we will also talk about in a few slides. Okay, so the statistical analysis that they do um, is based on uh, shuffling clusters 1,000 times. Um, that's the default, and again, you can change that. Uh, so for each cluster one, 
to cluster two relationships. So there's three clusters here. So there'd be like six combinations because it takes into account self to self and then also cluster two to cluster one would be different from cluster one to cluster two. So it's like directional. Oh, the manual's here. Okay. Um, all right, so they shuffle it a thousand times and then they generate a null distribution of the mean of the average ligand and receptor expression in the interacting clusters by you know uh, sampling or not sampling, just permuting the cluster labels of all the cells. So, um, uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, if there are subunits, then they just take the average expression, which is the lowest. Um, so, <laughs> oh, if so, for example, for the recept, so they're calculating the receptor ligand average, but if there's a receptor or a ligand with multiple proteins, they'll take the expression level that's lower. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they create this null distribution and then they take the true cluster labelings and um, determine, uh, you know, whether or not this uh, average expression is significant based on that null distribution. So it's, um, it's very simple and um, it takes a while <laughs> to do this 1000 times. Um, uh, I wanted to say something else, but I forgot, but maybe we'll come back to it. Do you think that like the number of times that you shuffle it will like kind of inflate the value that you get? That's true. Like if you do it only 10 times, there's nothing probably significant. So there's just lots of false positives, essentially. I don't know. So I actually, I ran this a few times. I actually, I didn't change, you can, so you can change the number of iterations. So that could be good to test out. Because like, yeah, a thousand times is is just a lot. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, wait, what's in the I I just if you re restate the question for the people that are on Zoom. Oh yeah. You answer it. Oh yeah. It's yeah. okay. I'll do that. Yeah, it's probably muffled. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so this is the cell phone statistical analysis, and that's the extent of it, basically. Um, yeah, <laughs> so going over to the output, they have two built-in plots um, and, you know, there's a bunch, they output all of the uh, values and the p-values so you can do more analysis yourself if you want to, but this is just what they have built into the package. So what the plot on the left is showing uh, on the y-axis is each receptor ligand interaction. And then the x-axis is the cell type to cell type two uh, relationship. So yeah, they have these, the means. Um, oh yeah, they calculate like, yeah, going back to how they calculate this, it's just like, the mean of the ligand in one cluster and the mean of the receptor in another cluster, and then they average that, and that's their, their value. So that's and, what- they, And that's supposed to like, like determine this or try to be a proxy for like the strength of the interaction? Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's, that's what they did. Um, so yeah, they have that uh, shown, well, log two of that in, uh, based on the color, and then the size is uh, the log of the p-value. Um, yeah, and then over here, it's a little simpler. Um, so not showing directionality here, they're just showing the number of interactions or significant interactions between each cell type. Um, so, you know, red, they're there's more interactions between like endo and EPT cells. Oh, it would be direction directional actually, because yeah, so this is also a uh, directional, but um, yeah, not showing p-values here, just number of interactions. Um, so that's about all that cell phone does. Uh, you can do further analysis yourself. Uh, the authors suggest, they have a suggestion, they have, they output a count network.txt file, which looks something like this. 
um, and they suggest you upload it to Cytoscape, which I didn't want to, but it's an option <laughs> that you can. I didn't want to download it. And like, I was like, oh, you probably have to make an account, but if you want to try that out, then you can, or you can input this into like network X or something. So they make us a standby having implementation or something. Oh, they do? In this we type out. Oh. Ooh. So that's all I need. Okay, okay. Yeah, good to know. Um okay, yeah. So good to know. Axel pointed out that uh scanpy has like is integrated, has a it integrates like cell phone and you can it has an implementation on it, which might even be faster than maybe. Probably, this is very slow. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Uh, oh, it's based on Omnipath. Omnipath uses cell phones. Oh, Omnipath uses cell phones too? Okay. So Omnipath is just a database. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what I've been talking about so far has just been like cell phone version two. Um, but there is also a version three that came out a few months ago. Um, and in this new method, you can um, apply, oh, squid pie, squid pie. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. Anyway, so in cell phone version three, you can also input spatial data, so Visium or other, to improve the predictions. And I don't really know how mathematically they do this, but it's, it's an input that you can add if you have it. Um, yeah, because you might imagine, you know, if a if a group of cells express, expressing a receptor is very far away from a group of cells expressing the ligand, maybe they're not really communicating. So the spatial data can improve predictions. Um, they also have a new method in version three, which is optional, um, of prediction using differentially expressed genes instead of random shuffling. So you input differentially expressed genes that you define or you know calculate yourself, and then um, interactions will be considered significant or not based on whether one of the receptors or ligands is a differentially expressed genes or not, instead of the random shuffling and the null distribution stuff. So that's an alternative way potentially much faster way to calculate um, significance. And also in cell phone version three, you can add receptor ligand interactions that are missing from their database. Um, and that's all, that's all for cell phone. Okay, yeah, 17 minutes, cool. So now moving on to cell chat, um, you can, so here's just the general overview. So starting from the database, you know, the database is a little more, uh, it's larger um, and includes more types of proteins. Uh, the input can be either the same as it is for cell phone, uh, which is, you know, inputting your cells annotated with their cell types, or it also has this option to input like a trajectory. So this is this could be useful if you're studying uh, development or some kind of time series. Um, yeah. So instead of doing a hundred random shuffles and creating a null distribution, they'll they use uh, something called communication probability, which they point out isn't technically a probability. Um, but uh, so instead of the counts of significant interactions, they'll they'll calculate this communication probability, which we will talk about in depth, um, so we all understand what's going on. Um, and then you know they'll have they have their built-in visualizations, um, so a similar bubble plot, circle plots, uh, hierarchy plot. I'm sure you could make a heat map quite easily if you wanted to. And then they go further with network analysis, um, and then you know. Uh, other analysis of like pattern analysis uh, and uh, clustering of signal types. And um, they also allow for comparison across conditions. So like healthy versus like disease, which cell phone does not have built in. It's something that the authors say like, oh, just run it for the two different data sets and then like compare it yourself. Um, I, yes. Yeah, oh, so to answer Yanwen Gong's question. I don't know exactly. There's a paper about it that came out a few months ago, which I can share after if someone reminds me if I didn't read it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll share it after. Just remind me. Um, yeah. Okay. So 
a little bit about the input before we talk about the communication probability. So cell chat input, again, you have two options. You can do your discrete states, which is the same thing as cell phone DV, or you can input uh, what they call continuous states or a trajectory. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it has like a little like mustache. Yeah. Um, oh. Chopped up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is um, just, yeah, this is the data set they, they use in the cell chat paper. So I just used their examples. Um, okay, so the continuous states. So again, the discrete states would be, you know, putting in something like this where you have your dermal, epidermal, and other cell types like annotated. Or what they did as an example in the paper is they just took the dermal cells or just took the epidermal cells. And then cell chat has like a trajectory, a pseudo time like analysis built in um, and they'll calculate this trajectory, but then they, they, they group the um, cells into um, these like, they say continuous states, but they still treat them as like discrete things. And the downstream analysis is all the same. So, you know, they have, they do have this nice suit of time analysis, um, but they, everything downstream is the same. Okay. All right, going on to communication probability. So some math, uh, this is based on the law of mass action. Um, so let's just go through <laughs> what all these are. So, sorry, looking at the top, um, uh, this is the communication probability of uh, between cluster I and cluster J. Um, yes. Um, and then the L, so just going right through LI or is the ligand of cluster uh, I, the expression level. And how this is calculated is shown um, down here. So LI, if the ligand has multiple subunits, like if it's just one molecule, then it's pretty simple. You know, it's just the expression level. But if there's multiple subunits, then they take um, the geometric mean. Um, and M1 here is just the number of subunits in L. Okay. And then uh, similar for uh, the receptor, R, yeah, RJ, receptor of cluster J expression level. Uh, and again, if there's subunits, they'll take that into account not by taking the geometric mean, um, but in this case, they have to add information <laughs> about RA and RI that might be present in J, and those are either co-stimulatory receptors, activating ones, or co, uh, sorry, inhibiting receptors, or RI. So those are taken into account here. All right, back up to this equation. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, this is like, you know, receptor ligand, um, and they use Hill functions. So that's what the KH is from. It's the parameter for the Hill function. So KH is, I understand it as the ligand affinity for the receptor. And they just set it to 0 0.5 by default. Um, I don't know if you can change it. Maybe you can. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, they have like, their, they have their reasoning for choosing it for 0 0.5, but like, yeah, maybe if you maybe if you wanted to mess it up, you could change it if you want to. <laughs> um, it's if you know what the ligand affinity is. Mm -hmm. Do they not have any of those affinities annotated in their database? No, I don't know. I don't know. There's probably somebody who's For fun. studying ligand receptor affinity. Not them. Not them. But that they didn't. They curated it from like a different data sources, right? They didn't come it up. Come up with it themselves. Yes, but from memory, they tested the effect of KH and it doesn't really change. Okay. Okay, good. Good well, to know. Thanks. Should, point, point five, though. I don't know. They just said like, oh, like all the data has to be between zero and one, so which is 0 0.5. <laughs> just mm -hmm. something in the middle. Yeah, safe. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then last thing um, is just N is just the number of um, uh, ligand receptor pairs total. Yeah. So that's like out of all, all of, so the P reported is the total probability of communication. It's not the probability of communication for a specific ligand receptor pair. There's a, 
P for every like interceptor pair. Okay. For every cluster. Okay. Uh, interaction. Yes. Yes. So. Oh, okay. Got it. Yes. So cool. yeah, the result, the three D matrix K by K by N. So there's a yeah, there's a lot of communication probabilities. Um, oh, I don't think I have a slide on this. Yeah, um, but they also do a little bit of permutation. So they don't do a thousand, they do a hundred by default permutations to get a p-value for the communication probability. <laughs> um, so they'll do a similar thing to cell phone GB where they'll like shuffle the labels of all the cell types and then like see what the distribution is and then see what this, um, the, communi the communication probability, the p-value is for th uh, that way by doing a hundred instead of a thousand iterations. Yeah, a thousand, it was so slow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I feel like the, I don't, I didn't really look, but I feel like the cell phone like lab, I feel like they're not like mathematicians, which is fine. I'm not a mathematician. Huh? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna look at some of the outputs just from the paper. So they used data, uh, embryonic data, so public data, and they also used data from Plicus lab because I think the original paper was a, like Plicus and Chingni were like co, um, like mentoring people. Yes, so this is the data set that we're gonna be uh, looking at results for. So just showing that like, Yes, there are many different cell types here. <laughs> uh, here are some of the abbreviations that we'll see. So fibroblast myeloids, endo. I don't care about skin. If you do, then this is maybe an interesting paper for you. <laughs> um, yeah, so here are the results of inputting this data set into cell chat. So they identified 25 different cell types I don't think they're showing all of them here. Like maybe some just didn't have any significant interactions, but they had um, 60 uh, ligand receptor interactions identified as significant. And they grouped those interactions into 25 different signaling pathways. So here they're just showing an example of one of these 25 networks that you could create with the output. So this is what they call a hierarchical plot. Um, the size, the circle size is the, the like is scales to the cell population. Um, and then the edge uh, or the thickness of the lines connecting each is the communication probability. So thicker line, higher communication probability. Um, yeah, so you can see uh, if, uh, so for this particular network, again, there's like 25 different networks uh, that it created just from this one data set. Um, you can see like what cells are connected to which cells. Um, so in addition to this network stuff, why are there, why are there two sources? So like on the left and right. Oh yeah, so they just, okay. Uh, so they do this to, so, to show like self to self communication. Um, so here the source are the fibroblasts. Yeah, the color corresponds to the cell type. So like red is fibroblast A, blue is fibroblast B. Um, so there are, so the source here is the same, but the target here, this time it's itself, but here the target is, uh, you know, myeloid or A, B, C, D, E or whatever. So th these are these are showing different information. Does that make sense? I think the question was why is there two sources on the left and right of each of the hierarchical plots? Just to like split it visually. Yeah. Oh. If I remember, it's like literally. You can show self right? I mean, yeah. yeah I, don't I don't think know. this is at a time. You can just pick which ones to show on which side. side. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like these are showing different information and it's just, you can't combine it all into one, at least not in a visually nice way. Um, okay, yeah, if that, 
Okay, if you have further questions, let me know. I hope that was <laughs> helpful. Um, okay, so after they make this network, I'll move this a little bit. So after they make this network, they do um, network centrality analysis to classify um, in, uh, cells in this data set as either senders, receivers, mediators, or influencers. So uh, senders and receivers are, you know, I think out degree and in degree is pretty um, intuitive. Uh, okay, that's like big enough that people can yeah. see. <laughs> um, yeah, and then um, mediator is defined by betweenness centrality. So that's kind of when a cell type is acting as like a gatekeeper and it's like connecting these two different networks and without it, then that communication wouldn't really happen. Um, so information or uh, information centrality is like a hybrid measure. I don't know the exact math behind it, but that's, what's, uh, that's what determines uh, a cell type as being an influencer or not. So uh, information centrality is just measuring the influence of this particular cell on each of these networks, but it's not it's not a gatekeeper. So it is a bit different. Like these individual networks will still like function without this particular cell type, but maybe like less. Okay. Um, yeah, so just an example in the paper of how you might interpret these plots um, are showing like for T the TGF beta pathway like uh, among wound cells uh, a lot of the interactions are paracrine or from one cell type to a different cell type you don't see a lot of these horizontal lines um, between self to self um, which would demonstrate autocrine signaling or at least maybe not necessarily same cell to same cell but same cell type to same cell type okay um, yeah, and then on the right, they they also point out that another interpretation they found is that like myeloid A is the uh, a dominant like um, uh, mediator. Sorry, yeah, yeah, mediator of um, the network. Um, yeah, which I think they say like, oh, this is consistent with like previous skin research. So. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like this is kind of where the comparisons between cell phone and cell chat kind of need to end because uh, cell chat goes a lot farther um, in how they analyze their networks while like cell phone doesn't really do that at all. So uh, in addition to, you know, just constructing these networks, they'll also um, I analyze uh, similarity between significant signaling pathways. So um, on the top left, this is just showing like what ligands are being secreted. So on the left, we have our different cell groups and then they identified five different um, patterns. Uh, and they did this uh, by doing like, I think um, like non, like NMF, NMF non-negative matrix factorization. Yes. Um, so they found all these patterns and they can see um, from these patterns, what uh, signaling pathways are contributing or part of these patterns. So um, again, like another uh, method of analysis, and you can do this for, you know, outgoing communication and incoming communication. So they do even more analysis. So on the bottom, they have a, a classification of pathways. Um, so they have two different types of uh, like two different types of classification here, the functional or the structural classification. So uh, functional is based on like same cell to same cell communication. So here they're showing the similar function and like myeloid A has a lot of the same connections to a lot of the same cell types. So that's why TNF and TGF beta would be, you know, grouped together in this, um, in this classification uh, method. Uh, and then on the left, they have uh, uh, the structural classification of pathways. So this is based on the structure of the network. Um, so, you know, so TNF and NCWNT, uh, obviously there's like a lot of different connections, 
but the shape of the networks is generally pretty similar. So that's why those are grouped together. Um, so when it says functional classification, that's not from the literature. No. That's from the, the analysis. Yeah. Like basically, it's two cell types are using the same or different pathways. Those pathways. Yeah, it could they could be using completely different pathways, but it's the same cell type to the same cell type is what it's determining that functional classification. Yeah, so good to know when you're interpreting these results, how they're grouping these. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. We can talk a little bit more about interpretation of this. Um, maybe at the end if we want to, but okay. So as I mentioned earlier, cell phone DB does not have any built-in way to compare across conditions, which I think a lot of us are working on like, you know, healthy versus disease conditions. So that's obviously a very desirable thing to have. Um, so cell chat has this, um, uh, a few built-in ways. Um, yeah, so the example they give in the paper is a comparison of embryonic data collected at 13.5 days versus at 14.5 days. And I didn't know that, but apparently like one day difference, like a lot, a lot of differences in one day for a mouse embryo. Um, so, you know, <laughs> they do, I don't know anything about like, I mean, I guess early on, it's not that surprising, but I was like 13 versus 14, like it's one day apart. I don't change in a day, but I guess I'm not developing You're anymore. Not I know, I know, <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you, so what you would do if you want to compare conditions is you would separate out your data input your disease data, input your healthy data as separate objects into cell chat and then run cell chat analysis separately for each. And then you can join them up and then they'll do a bunch of analysis for you with built-in uh, functions, which are, you know, I don't know. The cell chat tutorials are very thorough. I appreciate how good they are. Lots of like visuals and everything, all the codes provided. So that's very nice. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the comparing 13.5 and 14.5. Uh, and then, you know, as we had here, you can classify them functionally or based on their structure. And then they do like, they merge the two manifolds um, and then see what is, you know, classified as the same in the same cluster or what's like misclassified or not necessarily misclassified, but what's different between the two conditions. So, you know, it is only one day. So you would expect a lot of things maybe to be very similar, a lot of uh, signaling pathways to be grouped together. And that is what they see here. But then, you know, Wnt and Kit are misclassified. So uh, to quantify this, they calculated the Euclidean distance between uh, on this manifold of like each um, uh, signaling pathway from like itself in one condition to itself in the other condition and Wnt and Kit, which were the misclassified ones were of course farther away from each other. Um, Sorry, I'm confused. What, what do you mean by misclassified? Or not misclassified because there's no like right answer, but they're just grouped into different clusters. So those pathways are behaving differently between the time points. Well, they're talking to different cell types in each condition, right? Is this is this functional? Or? So they, I think this is fun. This is functional. In the paper, they also do it with structural, yeah. so you can see that as well if you want to compare that, because that could be a different result. Um, but this is functional. But you can do both. Yeah, it's well, just different. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's not misclassified. I will not use that word again. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I need to I need to be careful with my language. I'm sorry. Okay. But yeah, so uh they decided to look in the paper at like when uh what I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Oh yeah, winch signaling pathway. 
Um, and you can like visually see that it's like very different at 13.5 versus 14.5 days, you know, in the dermis signaling to dermis, there's nothing, there's nothing at 13.5 days. And then at 14.5 days, there's just like so much. Um, so uh, the, mis the different cl uh, clustering, the different locations in the manifold uh, make a lot of sense when you look at the structure of the network here. Um, yeah, but then, you know, you do see these similarities between like basal P and like, you know, to itself and then also to this other cell type. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is um, kind of, I think it's the last slide about like the output of cell chat. Uh, this is just, there are two other methods um, to compare two data sets. So the first way is through uh, a metric they call information flow. And that is just the total of all communication probabilities um, for each cell type in a given condition for each signaling pathway. So the information flow, you know, for E13.5 is, you know, present in, in, in the NT tweak and tweak signaling pathways. And then there's just no communication probability in the 14.5. Um, yeah, so you see a lot of similarities and then, you know, some differences and they will just like output that information and visualize it for you quite nicely. Um, and then they also do um, a different visualization of pattern recognition analysis. So they had done, this is also based on the NMF uh, results. So this is, uh, so outgoing communication communication patterns of secreting cells. So the size of the dots here um, and their presence or not is uh, based on their contribution um, to uh, this being like the, pa the pattern of this network to this cell type, if that makes sense. So, Again, you can visualize the differences. Like a lot of things are present in both um, conditions, but you know, again, the kit pathway in particular is very different. Um, it has a high contribution to fibroid. Uh, fi is that what they are? Fibroblasts. fibroblasts yeah, yeah, fibroblasts. Um, and at fourteen point five days, and then in, in completely different cells at thirteen point five days. So you can see differences here. Um, okay, that's it. That's all for um, cell chat. So now we'll move into a comparison. Uh, so just a quick review, uh, a comparison, uh, a re quick review comparison of cell phone versus cell chats methods. So cell phone just takes the, or not, sorry, not random sample, random shuffling. Um, yeah, typo, to make the null distribution, or there's the new option to base it on differentially expressed genes. Um, and then the output is counts of interactions with associated p-values. So it's a little more uh, binary. So it's not like a strength measure, like the strength measure they kind of have try to infer through um, the p-value. <laughs> yeah. No, they just have it based on like the average expression and the p-value and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Average yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, cell chat, instead of doing that calculates, they'll, they'll calculate differentially expressed genes. You don't have to input it. Uh, it takes into account population size of each cell type um, in their calculations. They also note in the paper that if you did like facts or like some sorting of your cells and you don't want them to take into account population size, you can like tell it not to. So that's an option. That's the default? Option. That's the default? Okay, okay, good to know. Um, yeah, and then um, the output of the cell chat method is communication probability with associated p-values and then a bunch of further analysis as well. Um, so more comparison of just like what you can customize um, or other things to consider. So again, cell, cell phone doesn't have a way to compare across conditions. You have to do that yourself if you want to. Uh, it can incorporate spatial data. Um, the, the cell chat P 
paper said like, oh, Excel chat like could easily incorporate spatial data, which yeah, I'm sure they I'm sure you could do it, but I don't think it would be easy. Like a square peg into a round hole. Yeah. So well, I mean you could do it, but the question is yeah yeah so someone's working on it i guess <laughs> it'll happen eventually yeah um but cell phone already has it but again i don't i didn't look at like their math maybe it's like kind of ridiculous but, but it doesn't even like do it on spatial data it just uses it as an additional layer of information right yeah so it's not even like just applicable to like visium data on its own no yeah you don't even have you don't have to use visium data they say like oh you can just use like imaging data and oh, it, yeah it's like very very broad. Yeah, I don't, I don't Yeah, I think that paper could be interesting if someone else wants to present it, maybe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's a very cool application. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't read it, but I'll, I'll send it out and we can discuss or not if people are <laughs> interested. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Cell chat has a lot more built in visualizations. Obviously, with cell phone outputs, you can make more yourself, but you do have to do it yourself. Um, cell phone requires R and Python, and you run it from the terminal. And then, um, oh yeah, okay, Yanwen has the paper. I, I assume that this is the spatial paper, but yeah, I'll I'll put it in the GenPels chat too later, just so people have it. Um, yeah, uh, again, it's good to consider uh, that the cell chat databases were curated for humans. And for mice, while well, the cell phone database was made for humans. Um, and then uh, in cell phone, you can customize and add to the database. And in cell chat, I don't know if there's an easy way to add to it. You, you, can. Can. you can. Yeah. You can like ask Axel or Chingni or Emmanuel to add to it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. you're busy. <laughs> I need this one pair added. Um, yeah. Um, so, can I actually ask you a question about the data So I, I know that um, Sochin spent what, literally a year curating the data set. Yeah. Um, what's the, the data set for cell phone DP? I remember it not. Isn't it just like React now? Or is that a different? I think it could be. Right. So it's it's just like a, a database that's online that they did curate themselves. They did curate it, but they I think did. it's like just a few existing ones. But I understand. Okay. Yeah. Then like yeah. Yeah. No, 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 you did. Yeah. I I didn't yeah, I didn't mention that, but yeah, like this like cell phone, they used existing databases and put them together. Cell chat, they like used existing databases. And then also like went through papers and we're like, let's add these two. And, and those papers are in the cell chat database. Like I'm pretty yeah. sure you can see what the references are. Oh, yeah, the, the PubMed ID. Oh, nice. So nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you Which, can like validate that way. I, I actually think it's <laughs> a brutal amount of work, but, yeah. but I actually think it's incredibly valuable because mm -hmm. I think one of the major concerns you can have with any of these packages is how confident are you in the ground truth, right? Um, I, I think that that like like just based on that, I'm much more confident in such chat because it was actually like manually curated. Mm -hmm. right? Because keg or go or kind of using this for uh, <laughs> being being less than perfect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I don't, sorry if you can't hear, um, but we're just talking about how cell chat is very curated, and you can see the source like papers of uh, each individual interaction that you get in your output. So that can be very valuable if you want to verify that this interaction is real or like someone has observed observed it. Um, yeah, and uh, another thing you can do is you can subset their database if you're only interested in like. I want these cells to be touching each other. Like I don't want to, I don't care about secretions. Then you can like say that. Um, yeah, you can subset it in a few different ways. So is there like metadata associated with each like interaction that they have? I guess so. I yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. What other like sorts of metadata do they have besides like secreted or like contact based? I don't know. Okay. It's worth so the motivation of the skin. So yeah. You think about all the interactions within skin that will happen. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So speaking of the, it, this was like, I guess like uh, made for skin, but like people use it for a lot of other things. I heard a rumor that there's a neuron specific version in the works, but I don't know if- Of the database? Of, yeah, of the oh, cell chat okay. like cool. database. So I don't know. I like, I, I I asked, I don't know. I asked, like, I don't know. Apparently Ching Ni wants something from Kevin. So Kevin's like, how about, how about the neuron? <laughs> so uh, that might be happening, but I have no idea of the timeline. I don't, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to like ask Ching Ni myself, like, can I just like, have that. Yeah, I mean, like I'll, I'll, like I'll work on it. Like I would. <laughs> hmm? it's a mystery. Yeah, you can ask it, it's yeah I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just something like Chingni told oh. Kevin, and I'm like, well, is it true? <laughs> like, so I, I assume, yeah, um, but yeah. Um, so I, I, I have used cell phone and cell chat a little bit. Um, so cell chat is for Mac, Linux, or Windows. And it's very, it's pretty easy to install. They're very clear about what the dependencies are. And there's like great tutorials if you have <laughs> issues. Um, and then uh, cell phone, the tutorials are a little less thorough, um, but it's simpler. So it's just easier to use. Um, and it says like, you need to use it in Mac or Linux, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like it would work on Windows. I like didn't want to install it. So I just had it, I got it working in Google Colab um yeah <laughs> so you can just use it in google collab you don't have to install it so if you have windows you can use it it doesn't matter um but it's really it's so slow um and i mean it's faster though like it's faster in comparison it's still not it's not like light speed like it takes like an hour or two but like like cell phone takes many hours <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I have I have it working on Google Colab, and I'll, I'll link this to Gen Pals if you want to use it and not install it. So that's yeah. That's um. We'll send it. We'll send it to the Slack. Yes. And then um, we'll talk. Let's talk a little bit about other cell cell communication tools and databases. So there's like NicheNet, which I think was made for cancer. Um, so it's like very highly cited, like very, like more than cell tac and cell phone combined. I think it's like very popular. I haven't used it. Yeah. So it is older. So it does have that advantage, but like, that's well, so yeah, self, so, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but it was like, I don't know, like, they're all very highly cited. Like, I think, uh, like based on papers of the same age like cell phone and cell chat are both like 96th percentile and then niche net is like 98th percentile but Dude, i heard uh, that cell chat is like the most highly cited paper of nature communication yeah, like top 10 20, 20. That's yeah, crazy. whoa yeah that's crazy yeah it still was obviously an immense amount of work mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh yeah i think I don't know, like there's a lot of things to consider, but like I'm going to be using cell chat <laughs> going forward. And it's not just because it's at UCI. Yeah, um, but you know, NicheNet is another option. I haven't really read about it, um, but they include interactions like downstream of the receptor. So there's like the, uh, the ligand, the receptor, and then like the whole signaling pathway, which is just a lot. And like, I don't really know how they use that data, but it's another option and like, it's also a separate yeah, it's yeah, it is different. Um, but it's another database at least that you can like use if you want to. Um, there's also Omnipath, which is a lot, which is also very broad. Like in addition to ligand receptor, they have like some other protein protein interactions. Um, again, I didn't like read the paper, but that's also pretty widely used. And then there's like Cytotalk, NatMe, FlyPhone DP, FlyPhone DB for Drosophila. I don't know if anyone here works with Drosophila, but like if you do, then there's a database for that now. Um, and then there's like some other ones, but they're all like, I don't, I think they're like 
not like defunct, but just uh, there's no <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they're just I don't know. Like I feel like all the other ones, like there's like little updates and like little improvements all the time, and then this hasn't been updated in two years. So I don't know. I'm not going to use them. And then there's also um, this like wrapper called Liana, which you can like it has most of these like in it, and you can. So if you wanted to, for example, like use the cell phone database for your cell chat analysis, you could, or you could like use like the cell chat or the Omnipath database for like cell phone. And it just like allows you to mix and match. I haven't used it. So I don't know if it like works very well, but it exists, it's out there. Um, yeah, okay. I forgot what other slides I have, yeah. Thanks for listening. That's all. We can discuss more. Thank you. Um, yeah, lots of tools out there. I'm like, yeah. Yes. Um, so have you applied cell phone, cell chat to your data? Uh, I have for cell chat. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't like, I don't know. I haven't gotten through very far on it because yeah. I'm working on a paper that's unrelated and I have to do that. But um, I will, I have like run it and I'll like try to like interpret it <laughs> like soon, but yeah, it like works fine. It's like, it like, it, it like at a glance makes sense, but I haven't like done a deep dive, but it like works. Mm -hmm. For me, my limited experience with cell chat is that the plots are really fucking nice mm -hmm. they're also not incredibly interpretable in the sense that they're not super useful like you have to be very careful about what plots you look at yeah um, not to say that there aren't plots that are useful but you have to definitely look at them. Mm -hmm. um yeah i'd be really curious i don't know if anyone's published like a little new paper on cell cell communication it's like showing the differences do you know what i mean I feel like there's some reviews, but they're kind of old. <laughs> so the supplementary and probe cell chat have a comparison between cell chat and cell chat unity, single cell ISO, I think, and only plots show that they're comparison. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we just talked about two, and it's just because, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Someone told like a collaborator was like, you should try cell phone. And I was like, why? <laughs> so, Did they give you the answer? No. They, they hadn't heard of cell chat. And I was like, I'm going to use cell chat. So that's it. <laughs> yeah. which, which one do you find is easier to use? Oh, they're they're both pretty easy. Yeah. Like I think cell chat is more complicated, but the tutorials are so good that it's just like very straightforward. And then cell phone is like, I don't think they really have thorough, thorough tutorials, but it's it's like two commands. So you just like install it, run it, make plots, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're both very uh, usable. Yeah, sorry. I think, I think that's the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. To do what? It took me a year to install a cell phone. Maybe like a year? Months. What? Or well, rather, I waited a year. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. I'm just going to create a virtual environment. To do this. Oh, I guess it is difficult, but again, it works in Google Colab, so don't oh, exactly. don't install it. Well, just well, use well. it in the. Cloud. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's crazy that it has R and Python as dependencies. Yeah. That is. Huh? So oh, really? So does Sarai. Yeah, like everything uses Reticulate. Uh, mm. Most single cell packages in R pull stuff in Python. Can you say the opposite, <laughs> though? Yeah. What? The opposite is not the opposite, true. Yeah. No, the opposite is not true. <laughs> <laughs> Matt in our lab has this typical user method, which is like R in a cold in that lab. Whoa. And that was the what if you don't have that's a lot MATLAB like exactly. license? Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you talk about the, the application that you're using? This one? 
Uh, yeah, so it's very early stages. We got a, a single nucleus uh, sequencing data set from 5XFAD um, mice or normal uh, mice. And uh, this time point is four months, um, which is still a little early. Like I feel like the big differences you see are like eight months and older. Um, yeah, so just, just seeing like what the differences are between the control versus the Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, AD model. <laughs> yeah. Do you plan to add like time, like more uh, time points? Yeah. There's like, we would like to compare also at eight months. Um, and then uh, I don't know. Like, so, wait, what are your what are your genotypes? You have 5X FED and wild type? Mm -hmm. There should be eight month mouse data for both of those on the encode portal. For. RNA-seq. For single cell? No, no, not for single cell. Is yeah. there a model you do there? There is, um, but there is single cell data for 5XID castaneous crosses and for castaneous black six crosses for the control for eight months for single cell on the ENCODE portal. Mm. But what, what brain region? Mm, Just cortex and hippocampus. Like whole? whole? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. I think I might like use their like data for like annotating things, but I think we 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 sequenced like a very specific like region in like I always forget what it is. It's either retrosplenial or cor like cortex or I do not know neuroanatomy. <laughs> me <so>. neither. <laughs> me neither. They tell me these things and I don't know it, yeah. so I forget. But like it's. <laughs> I'm sure you write it down very carefully. Like, it's like, written. I will look this up. It's written <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else will correct me if I'm I've wrong. taken. I've You're taken one neuro class. One. That's pretty good. Peter's taken zero. Okay. <laughs> Just push him under the bus. He's not here. <laughs> this is going on YouTube. Oh no, this is recorded. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cut this out. Censor this. Just censor. <laughs> just, just censor this whole discussion. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But yeah. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yeah. Any more questions from the chat? I don't know if anybody heard me actually. Oh, fine. I'm not muted. There. Yeah, there's pe some people, oh, cool. including Eight. myself and Katrina. Right. Six. Okay, they're leaving. Okay. All right. Bye. Thanks Bye. For <laughs> um, stop.